Look at these two people on the screen. Let's call them person A and person B. They have the same age, gender, and background. Let's say their lives are complete replicas of each other. They're exactly the same in all aspects. They have the same experiences and the same ups and downs in life. But the only difference is that person A is always miserable, depressed, and looking for more out of life. Where person B is always in a great mood, he's positive, and good things tend to happen to him. Now, why would this be? What does person B do that's so different? I want you to try and guess the reason for this and then I'm going to give you two more seconds before I reveal the answer. Person B reprogrammed his subconscious mind. I'm going to give you some real life examples and solutions that I personally have used that have benefited me tremendously. And I guarantee you by the end of this video, you are going to discover the exact steps on how to reprogram your own mind in less than seven days. Most people wake up in the morning and instantly think about their problems. Each problem is connected to certain memories and those memories are connected to certain people and things. Your brain is similar to let's say an old tape recorder. This tape recorder plays back to you the same cassette over and over every single day. So if your brain is the record of the past then the moment you start your day you're already thinking and living in the past. Each one of your memories have emotion and these emotions are the final product of your past experiences. So the moment you recall the memories of your problems, all of a sudden you feel unhappy, you feel sad, and you feel pain. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. This essentially is what creates your character. If you start your day off illuminating negativity and participating in things that don't contribute to your overall development, then your life will be trapped in the constant cycle of mediocrity. You keep creating the same life that you don't even like. Here's how it usually happens. You wake up and you grab your cell phone, you check your Instagram, check your messages, read a few emails or texts, then you check the news and now you finally feel really connected to everything that's known in your life. After that, you go through a series of routine behaviors. You get out of bed on the same side. You go to the toilet. You get a cup of coffee, your favorite cup. You take a shower. You get dressed and you take the same route to work. Finally, you get to work and you see the same people that push the same emotional buttons. When the work is done, you hurry back home, do the same things all over again, and tomorrow, guess what? Your routine restarts. Your routine works like a computer program and you no longer run the show. It's the subconscious program that caused the shots. By the time we're 35 years old, 95% of who we are is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a program. This is your subconscious mind. So when you use your 5% conscious mind and say to yourself, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be free. But the body is used to running on a different program. You're literally putting the 5% conscious mind against the subconscious mind, which is 95%. Who do you think has the advantage? This is like putting a junior varsity basketball player against a professional basketball player in the NBA. No wonder you can't make changes and end up going back to the old program and creating the same life. Before I continue, I want to talk more about the difference between the conscious and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is like the captain of a ship. The captain stays on the deck and can see where they're sailing and literally controls everything. On the other hand, engineers who are responsible for controlling the engines and other instruments can't see what's going on outside the ship. They're inside the ship following orders coming from the captain. Engineers are like the subconscious mind. Engineers don't know where they're going, they just follow orders. They obey the captain because he's in charge. He's supposed to know what he is doing. In the same way, your conscious mind is the captain of your ship, your body, and your environment. Your subconscious mind takes the orders you give it based upon what your conscious mind believes and accepts as true. It doesn't question the orders. It doesn't engage in proving whether your thoughts are good or bad, true or false. The subconscious mind is like the soil. Whatever seed you plant there, it will grow. Soil doesn't just say, let me prioritize this seed over another seed and give more nourishment because it's gonna bear fruits one day. It grows whatever you plant there without differentiating what seed you've planted. So then how do we begin to make changes? How do we reprogram our subconscious? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind and that's where repetition and meditation comes in. 
And when I say repetition, I mean the act of adopting good habits and sticking to it for a consecutive period of time. For me, it was all about my routine, specifically my morning routine. I knew that if I could do things every day that developed me mentally, spiritually, and physically, that eventually I would be a better person on the other side. So I decided to test myself with 30 to 90 day challenges where I would do specific tasks as I woke up every day. So for several days, I started to rewire my brain to read, work out, and meditate until eventually I wouldn't have to think about it. My subconscious mind would automatically take over. After adopting several good habits like meditation, you can learn how to change your brain waves and slow them down. And when you do that properly, you can enter the operating system where you can begin to make fundamental changes. The body was a servant once, but now has become the master. All of a sudden, when you decide to change and step into the unknown, the body doesn't like it. The body would rather feel guilt and suffering because it feels familiar and it can predict it. Being in the unknown is a scary place for the body. and Entering into the unknown is like stepping into a deep river. The body knows that if you don't succeed in passing to the other side of the river, it's going to die. So it's going to do anything to stop you. This is why the moment you start meditating suddenly, your nose starts itching. You remember an important task you had to do and out of nowhere, you get a memory from 10 years ago. This is your body saying, come on, just give up and let's go back to our old miserable life. But once you're in that deep meditative state, you can start creating your future. What kind of new life do you want? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate? What kind of person do you want to be? The act of mentally closing your eyes and rehearsing the things or behavior you want in life is the best way to create your future. If you're truly present, the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and real life experience. Through the act of imagination, you're installing the software programs of your future life. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. It's a map of the future. And if you keep doing it, who knows, maybe you start just acting like a happy person. The word meditation means to become familiar with. So as you become familiar with your thoughts, behaviors, and emotions of the old self, you no longer let them influence you. Instead, you start thinking new thoughts and condition the body into a new emotional state. And if you do this long enough, this new emotional state will become familiar to you. Creating a new self is like creating a new garden. First, got to get rid of the weeds and the rocks. Then you need to pull out the plants from the past year and you have to prepare the soil. Only after that, you can start planting. Creating repetition through good habits like meditating basically works the same way. You're preparing the garden and it's not an easy job. Training your body to sit down and meditate is like training a wild animal or a dog. You say sit down and wait here, but it runs away. So you catch it and bring it back. But of course, it runs away again and you have to catch it and bring it back again. If you do this for just seven days, you will already start seeing differences in your life. You will start catching yourself more and avoid going back to that old unhappy self. Of course, you need to repeat the process long enough until your future reality becomes your current reality. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and comment for more content. Thanks for watching and stay unstoppable.